I hear you're in the market for a good time. Maybe something to tell your friends about. Shh, not here, not so loud. It's a secret. If you come back, I'll let you in on the secret. It's secret bosses. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. Secret bosses aren't just optional bosses. They're deeper than that. The secret within every secret boss elevates it to its own distinct category. The process gives designers a lot more to work with than just a normal boss, or even an optional one. But no two secret bosses are the same. They can come in so many different forms, and the path you take to get there shapes what the player will get out of the experience. Let's talk about the design of secret bosses, and how the mystery surrounding them can add an ocean of depth to a game. But first, you can't beat a godskin apostle without a godlike skincare routine. That's not even a secret boss, Mike. What's with the segue? I'm only 30 hours into Elden Ring and I'm bad at it. Shut up, you try making a boss-related skincare segue. Today's episode sponsor is Geology. All right, that works. It's men's skincare reinvented. Your skin is important, and taking care of it can be challenging. You know you should do something, but there's so many options. Geology creates a customized skincare routine just for you, aimed at your specific goals. They can design a routine to help you fight acne, combat dark and puffy under eyes, reduce your skin oils, and prevent wrinkles. Just take their 30 second diagnostic quiz about what you want to do and their team of dermatologists will design a regimen just for you and ship it right to your door. Their products only use the ingredients that matter too, not weird marketing fluff. Science. Skin science. Geology is a nine-time award-winning men's skincare company, featured in Men's Health, Ask Men, and Esquire, and loved by all with over 5,000 five-star reviews. Their eye cream is winning awards all over the place, and it's included in the five-piece trial set. Head over to geology.com and take their free skincare quiz to save up to 70% off on your 30-day trial. That's G-E-O-L-O-G-I-E dot com. Thanks, Geology. People love a mystery. With one suggestion, one clue, one breadcrumb trail, a mystery creates a reason to care. Have you ever found a secret about a game you thought you knew everything about? Maybe your friends at school found a new combo, or there was some secret dev level someone discovered online. My favorite one was Missing No in Pokemon Blue. When I was a kid, I'd already be in the game. I thought there wasn't much else to do, but when I surfed on the coast of Cinnabar Island and found this, that was something new. It broke the level cap, broke items, broke the Hall of Fame, it broke Kanto itself, and it was right off the coast of Cinnabar Island this whole time, if you knew how to get it. Now, Missing No wasn't an intentional secret, it was just a glitch. A dramatic one tucked away in a corner, but one that could capture my imagination as a kid all the same. If Missing No was right there, who knows what else was lying just out of sight. Secret bosses can do the same thing, but on purpose. What is a secret boss anyway? Is it just an optional boss? Well, it is optional, but a secret boss isn't just a boss that you can stumble into. Secret bosses are what they are because of what you have to do to get to them. The extra effort you have to go through creates subtle effects. A secret boss can elevate a game beyond a checklist of tasks into something interconnected and living. The secret creates mystery and gives the impression of even more to come. Something hidden to discover, if you know where to look. An extra challenge waiting just around the corner if you prove yourself worthy. Best of all, a designer looking to create a secret boss has plenty of tools they can use to create exactly the right experience. Every secret boss is a combination of two parts. The secret and the boss. Wow, that sounds really dumb when I put it like that. We gotta jazz this up somehow. How about the road and the destination? There we go. First, the road. Secret bosses are only secret if you have to do something to find them. But that could be anything. Puzzles, dialogue, tasks, hidden actions. As long as you go out of your way to do it, your actions can pave the secret road. The different ingredients you use to pave it will make the road feel different. The road to a secret boss can be paved with puzzles. Figure out the puzzle, and your prize is a cool thing to punch. Or some hidden side of the story that's fun to listen to. Or both. Discovering that the puzzle even exists can be part of the fun too. In Cuphead, the delicious last course, you go through a special multi-step side quest in the overworld to unlock a secret boss fight. In the shop, 
there's a mysterious trinket called the Broken Relic that you can buy. It doesn't do anything, but as you talk to the NPCs, you'll start to get a sense that there's a puzzle in the graveyard that everyone's dialogue is trying to help you solve. The relic acts as an obvious hint that there's an unsolved thread dangling in front of you, and the hidden but not too hidden graveyard plot both adds intrigue while making it clear enough to keep people searching down the path. At the end of that path, once you solve the puzzle, you get that big reward. The boss fight is very unusual. You take a little nap and fight within a strange dream, sandwiched between an angel and a devil. The two will swap places based on where you're facing, which phases the attacks in and out of existence. It's not all that hard of a fight. It's only one phase, but the unusual dreamy aesthetic, unique flip mechanics, and the secret path to get there make it stand out from the pack. How else can we pave the secret road? Instead of puzzles, you could try putting your secret boss behind a dialogue tree. Persona 4 did. Persona 4 is a murder mystery wrapped in an RPG, and the true ending is hidden behind whether or not you know who done it. You've got a couple very, very important conversations that you have to pass in order to get there. With, uh, whoever this is. Who knows. Get through the conversation correctly, and you'll get to the rest of the game. And then there's another dialogue tree to do later on for the true, true final boss. The secret in Persona 4's true final boss path is really just a test to see how well you've been paying attention, and the reward is a much more satisfying ending. Next, what if the secret boss was the reward for just doing… everything? Golden Sun The Lost Stage locks its strongest super boss behind 100% completion, where you have to collect every single collectible gin in the game. And in the original game. You bring your progress over with a password. It's a very, very long road to travel, but for series superfans, it's a clever way to cap the experience. Man, that's a long road, though. At least you only have to do it once. Unlike Persona 5, you can't even get to Persona 5's vanilla secret boss in your first playthrough. It's only available in New Game Plus. Now, I love Persona 5. I think I've made that painfully clear. But having to play through almost the whole thing back to back to be prepared for the ultimate challenge isn't super appealing to me. I don't really want to spend time re-grinding social links from zero and going through the same story again to just fight one boss. There's no problem with having a secret boss at the end of a 100% completion journey. It's a capstone for playing through the rest of the content. A secret boss that requires replaying most of the game is less okay, especially for a game whose calling card is its story. It might discourage players from playing that bit of content at all. If the secret boss were story focused though, that might be a different story. The more you can make the road mesh with the destination, the better. When you're paving the secret road, keep in mind that you can be creative with where you put the path. The key puzzles or actions don't have to just be in some quiet corner or during downtime. They could be anywhere. Back to Cuphead for this one. Cuphead has secrets you can suss out in the middle of boss fights. Some bosses have special attacks or add-on enemies you don't usually see, but you can unlock them if you complete special criteria. Others have secret alternate phases. The second part of the Howling Aces fight has a team of puppies circling around you in jetpacks. If you take them out normally, the boss will rotate the entire screen in the final phase. It's very disorienting. If it's too much for you, there's a secret alternative. Instead of taking each jetpack out, just carefully hit them until each one starts to smoke you'll trigger a completely different and way less vomit-inducing final phase. It's not much easier to beat, but it's easier on your stomach. Some fights like Sally's stage play can go in a completely different direction if you figure out the secret. If you jump on the background cherubs in the first phase, you bring down a background prop on top of the background husband. It changes the narrative of the stage play completely, and gives the second and third phases more complicated patterns to dodge. The extra context is fun, but the unique way the game compels you to reach the extra stages makes the process stand out more than it would have otherwise. For many secret bosses, the fun is in the hunt itself. The Nyakuza Metro DLC for A Hat in Time is a sprawling cyberpunk Tokyo, full of places to explore and a ton of verticality in its platforming. The scene is dense with small details, like these goofy billboards, cat Roombas to bounce off of and subway cars pulled by giant cats. There's plenty to see along the way, but stashed away somewhere is a hidden mini-boss you could find by going off the beaten path. Parkour up this unsuspecting building to the roof, bounce off this shady spring, you get sent to a boss arena with nothing but this manhole cover. Kiwami means extreme. 
Oh, this is gonna be a Yakuza thing, isn't it? Yep, it's a Majima Cat. The fight is pretty simple. The mini boss is just a beefed up version of a normal enemy, but it's more involved than you would think. And the journey was the point anyway. A Hat in Time uses a secret boss as an end destination that gives a more concrete reason to explore the cityscape. It's perfectly valid for the road to be more fun than the destination. The mystery is often more fun than the answer, and that's okay. But that's not the only way to make a great secret boss. Sometimes the end is fun too. So you've done it. You've collected all the garbage, you talked to the guy and gave that weird answer six times in a row, you unlocked the developer commentary and did the thing they told you to do. You're here, ready to fight the super dragon, or the weird court jester, or the developers themselves. But how do you make the fight worthwhile? What things do you have to keep in mind to make the juice worth the squeeze? First, get a sense of what you want the fight to focus on. A game probably tries to focus on one aspect of itself more than others. Some games are more intense and action-packed. Some are more relaxed and introspective. Some lean into choice, and some into one polished experience. Every game's gonna be a little different. Whatever your game's calling card is, some of the best secret bosses try to give the ultimate payoff for that aspect of its game. If you want to go for extreme challenge, well, that's pretty easy to do as a secret boss. Final Fantasy IX's biggest secret boss is a Paint Sphere, who is also an alien. Where Ozma fits into the Final Fantasy IX universe isn't super clear, but it'll kill you all the same. Ozma is reachable only by getting real deep into this Chocobo minigame, getting a special ability, then flying to a secret sky garden. Hit up this cave, bulldoze over the warning the game puts there, and, well, good luck. Ozma can devastate the party almost immediately counterattacks all the time, and can sorta of cheat the fire off turns faster than any other boss in the game. It's not really fair, but then again it's not really meant to be. But there's another secret to the secret boss. There's a different long side quest to beat that makes the Ozma fight much easier by letting you use physical attacks and making some of Ozma's own attacks not also heal it. Probably go for that one first. Up to you. Ozma is a classic example of an ultimate test for people who have wrung out every other challenge a game can throw at you. Many games add in a boss rush or an arena mode as an extra challenge, and stick a secret boss at the end of it in one way or another. The true arenas are a tradition in the Kirby series, showing up ever since Superstar Ultra on the DS. It's the hard version of the regular arena mode, made up of gauntlets where you fight all the hard variants of every boss in a row plus the exclusive bosses in the game's extra campaign modes. You get limited heals between fights, and if you make it to the end, you get a harder instance of the final boss. Beat that, and you get the secret extra form of the final boss. Or just some guy. The mode is a swerve from Kirby's usually easy and forgiving platforming. The true arenas pull no punches and will test you, demanding that you learn each one of these fights. The attacks are aggressive and intense, and if you fail at any point, it's back to the start for you. Even better, pausing during most of these fights gets you a bit of extra lore. Kirby lore. If you don't know about Kirby lore, go look that up. It's worth it. Kirby's true arenas are a great finale for dedicated players, and give a challenge unlike the others you faced in the game up to that point. Challenge-focused secret bosses can work in a huge variety of genres. What if we go way out in another direction? Like, I don't know, DDR. Several DDR games have secret unlockable songs that you can take a crack at only once you've scored high enough in a few songs in a row. Sprint good, then sprint faster. If you're good enough, get ready to sprint the fastest you've ever sprinted. Those songs are secret bosses by any measure. They're just really, really fast songs that are really hard to do. It's not rocket science. Just crank up the difficulty, and that's plenty enough to be a secret boss. If you're a game about choices and story, have your secret boss reflect the choices you've made and give you some good story resolution. Deltarune is obsessed with letting you choose your own path and giving substantial consequences to the characters depending on the choices you make. The true final secret boss of the game is Spamton Neo, reachable at the end of two paths, either by completing a bunch of tasks or by completing a bunch of tasks in addition to completing a long, disturbing side quest and royally messing up the world and all the good vibes along the way. You've made your bed, now you get the lie in it.
The Spamton Neophyte, whichever path you take to get to it, is a major highlight. As is tradition with the true final optional bosses in Toby Fox's games, it has some of the best music and most interesting dialogue, as well as being the hardest challenge to get through. In all aspects, he makes the final destination worth the road it took to get there, even if you have to chip off a little piece of your soul along the way. Okay, so once you've nailed down what your secret boss is going for, you've got another question to think about. What do you want to actually use the boss to accomplish? You could use it as an instant element of surprise. Arcade-style games with short, linear structures and high replay value are a perfect place to tuck away a secret boss to spring onto players at a moment's notice, when the time is just right. Fighting games love to do this. Let's go back to your local 90s arcade and look at Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Each play is a quarter, so maybe you've dedicated yourself and gotten good enough to get pretty far without having to pay for a continue. This run though, this is the run. You're winning left and right. Maybe you can get to the end on one quarter. Quick too. Focus. Get ready for vice- What? Huh? Who's that? It's Akuma. Akuma was added as Street Fighter's first secret character. As a nod to the rumors going around that there were secret boss characters just like this in the earlier versions of the game. Akuma was part of the Anything Goes era of secret bosses in fighting games where any rumor could be true, and if not, the devs might make it true in the next game. Mortal Kombat dipped into that well a bunch. This is the era of Reptile and Noob Saibot, where no rumor was too outrageous, no character too stupid to be a secret boss. That treatment of secret bosses in fighting games doesn't only work in arcades. Some of the most famous surprise secret bosses are in Super Smash Bros. Melee, Crazy Hand in Classic Mode, and Giga Bowser in Adventure Mode. There's a little twist though. Secret bosses in a home console context should be a little easier to reach. The payoff of a secret only comes if someone knows it's there. Arcades could rely on crowds to show off whatever cool thing was happening. Melee made its secret bosses pretty easy to stumble into on your own. It's not all that hard to get to after a few runs in the mode, but each secret fight is still set up as a surprise. Crazy Hand shows up in the middle of the normal Master Hand fight. Giga Bowser shows up in a cutscene after beating Bowser normally. Melee came out at an optimal time for these kinds of secret bosses, where plenty of players at the time would either naturally discover these fights, or at least hunt them based on unclear rumors, adding to their mystique. If you're lucky enough to have a successful series on your hands, you could even use the secret boss as a secret marketing opportunity for the next game. That's what Kingdom Hearts did. Quite a bit, actually. If you're the kind of person that would jump through a ton of hoops to get to a secret boss, you're exactly the kind of person who would love a sneak peek at the next entry in the series. Several of Kingdom Hearts' biggest super bosses leaned hard into the mystery factor to entice players. Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix, 2 Final Mix, Birth by Sleep, and the DLC for Kingdom Hearts 3 all featured secret super bosses that teased future games by pitting you against mysterious figures that would play key roles later on. Fights like the Lingering Will and Yazora created intense fights that were both a blast to play and their own self-contained hype machines for super fans, thanks to their mystery and integration into the series proper. And after you do this once, fans will take the cue and scour any future games for the same thing. It works for Marvel in their post credit secret scenes, and if you do it like this, it's good enough for video games. The comment section on this video should be fun. Let us know about your favorite secret bosses and the weird paths you had to take to get to them. Secret bosses are a powerful tool for adding deeper layers to any game. Whether the payoff is the boss itself or the road to get there, secret bosses are a great reward for the players who dig deep.